of months and come back here. Um, a lot of nice things to share coming from the plans we have today. So this is a disclaimer as well, so I don't have any data or anything uh, in the question and answer part. Please don't give me such a hard time. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I hope, I hope this will be enlightening. Um, a lot of the stuff, I think, uh, cover a lot of the same topics shared by, by Elise, by Hiroyuki, you know. I think we, we do, as um, Yellow Page Directory companies, face a lot of the same challenges. And it was really great hearing from both of them. I learned a lot. Hopefully we can apply a lot of those learnings in our organization as well.
what was going to happen the week after. So with that uncertainty over the past two years, it really made working. Um, again, our type of model, which is a partner-based service model, very, very difficult because of all of that uncertainty that nobody had control over. So really, really, it was really just this June 2022 when really all the restrictions kind of loosened that we've had the opportunity to really get back, talk to our partners, reconnect with them. So that's really just the weird, <laughs> crazy situation that we're just now coming out from in the Philippines. So where did this leave us? I just four points, really. Um, the first one, again, so is it adapting with uncertainty. A lot of business closures, a lot of our partners just stopped answering our calls and then we found out they closed shop. Um, of course, then we budget cuts. Um, and then, of course, everyone's heard of the great resignation. So we've experienced it as well, um, especially with the challenge of bringing people back to the office. So we in DPC have actually brought people back to the office, but of course not everyone wanted to go back. Um, the thing about this, um, we talked about this, a lot of Filipinos during the pandemic, what was the, the key struggle really was that people had to be resourceful. So when we talk about, let's say, budget cuts, and that would cost increased competition, and then the DIY. So I think just, just to, 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 to jump off what Paul was saying, definitely what they're saying, Wix um, was one of the huge platforms, and, and Shopify and all these things really just exploded during the pandemic. So one of the things that the struggles that we, that we realized was that in the Philippines, um, DIY services went up, but outsourced services such as ourselves kind of struggled a bit. Because anything that required fees, um, Philippines would try to find a way around it. So that, that was just a problem. Um, everyone was just finding ways to do business on Viber. Everyone didn't want to use payment gateways because they had to do fees, so they just preferred bank transfers. They prefer cash on delivery. Um, people were happy doing business on their Instagram page, on their Facebook page. Again, because all of these were free, all of these circumvented fees, all of these, well, in the Philippines also circumvented taxes. Um, so, <laughs> so there were all these challenges about, at that time, because what, what would outsourcing services really provide? It's convenience, it's expertise. But they couldn't afford that luxury over the past two years in the Philippines. They couldn't afford the luxury of convenience, they couldn't afford the luxury of, of all of these things. So they tried to, to do it themselves, they tried to find a way, because they needed to survive as well. They also were struggling to find customers, they also were struggling um, to get the right footing during the past two years. But that's really just the opportunity that we saw right now as we're coming back. The great thing is that, yes, the competition increased because most of the people that we were talking to before the pandemic who were so afraid of digital, so used to their old ways, were forced to learn it. So they were forced to, to introduce. And now when we have conversations with them, they're more open because they had to learn it. So it's, it's a good pipeline now for us because they had to familiarize themselves with it, but then starting to realize, given the scale of what they actually wanted to do, because during the last two years, I think they just did it because of the necessity. But then once you know things have settled down and they realized the scale of the operations of what they really wanted their digital to do, they realized what a big job it was and that they couldn't do it by themselves. And those are the types of opportunities we're trying to capitalize on right now. Those people that were introduced to digital were forced to do digital, but are now all of a sudden realizing uh, it's a bigger job than they thought that their team could do. So that's where we are right now. So that's why we're talking about not just online, but, but online the right way. Because I think before, um, when we were selling websites 10 years ago, the goal was really just get them online. But now obviously everyone's online. So it's not enough, that isn't a key selling point. So how do you get them online the right way? Just to add to this as well, before I move to my next slide, for DPC, I think we're talking, one of the interesting things about this, a key, our base of customers, our verticals, are mostly B2B. Um, so with our discussions with Martin and the Wix team, a lot of the things that we're trying to do, and maybe people have some suggestions, is really how to come up with the right type of online presence for B2B businesses. What we've noticed is that for a lot of our partners in the steel industry, 
in the exterminator industry, in the thermal installation industry. Um, they not only need e-commerce, uh, not only booking systems, but, but we found interesting ways for some of them to, be, to use a Wix website. We created price quote generators, we created unique product catalogs. So what the effort really has been finding unique ways to make websites over and above what people know what, about what websites can do. So the goal has really been how to change the mindset of what a website is. Especially now with social having so many features, Instagram having stores, TikTok having stores. I mean, all the platforms are trying to expand their features. But introducing to them that basically all of those are websites too. <laughs> and Facebook is just a website. So just sharing with them that you know, if you want, if you like the stuff that's on Facebook, we can basically do that too. Because Facebook is also just a website, you know, at the end of the day. So how did we proceed? So three things. So I think what will the focus on this will be is really more of our selling approach, again on the service side, rather than let's say what are the technologies that we're doing. Because I think, you know, we're all kind of doing the same thing. We want that all-in-one solution, digital solution for our partners. So this is basically our attempt on figuring out how do we create more value how do you convince them about the all-in-one solution? Because again, it's that, it's value. Because we know that their mindset is, my, they're, trying to t they're trying to keep their money. They want to, they'll only release their money for something they see that's valuable, for something they feel like them, their company, their nephew, their, their best friend can't do. So what is that value? And this is uh, some of the things we've been trying to train our team on and train our partners on. Um, first one is transforming our customer service. So I know this has been a key theme for a lot of the presentations, but I think specific to really the transformation that we've been trying to make in DPC, it's something that we realize it's a bigger task than just moving from print to digital. Because, for example, the fulfillment time in print versus the fulfillment time in, in digital is so different. And I think that's something that we may have taken for granted before. Whereas a salesperson could knock off maybe 50 print contracts in a day, and then that's fulfilled because it's just sending a layout, putting it in, and then it's published. Now, obviously, to make a website with all the requirements, with all the design, with all the many designs, fulfillment times now take one to two months. And the level of service, the level of communication, are things that we've had to really reteach the team. We teach them that it's not just about signing the contract, that actually the contract signing means nothing until the website or the campaign is activated. So moving that understanding about how our customer service was before to what our customer service is now is key really to moving forward. Second is really understanding this new concept of a non-linear customer journey. So something as well for us to understand as well as something we explain to our partners to, this is really our entry point for the all-in-one solution. Um, I have slides that will delve into more detail on, on this. And then the last one, we've been hearing this a lot. Um, I didn't come up with the word either, um, but it's yeah, omni-channel ecosystems. Um, why the importance of what these are, how to build them, and explain them. Again, leading again towards the need for all many types of solutions. This is what we, one of our efforts, I think a lot of the questions before or earlier was, why need a website when there's Facebook, when there's Instagram, when there's TikTok? Um, the answer that we tried to answer there is ecosystems. Yes, there might be overlaps. Yes, there might be redundancies. But at the end of the day, they all serve specific purposes. They all have specific objectives that can work together for, for a specific goal. So first one on transforming customer service. Three points again. So first one is identify a clear and bespoke problem. So that's really one of the key thrusts that we've been trying to do and a major shift really for a directory company. Because obviously before, when you had the platform, there was one singular problem, one singular issue that the one product could solve. Moving then to a service-based um, digital service type um, offering, um, obviously problems need to be solved more specifically for them to value the difference of why I need this. 
Again, also sharing, unlike before where the problem was just they weren't online, now the goal really is to show them why you are online, but what are the different things you actually need to be online. Um, so that's one of the things we're trying to train our people on. Always come in with a problem, show them, because that also shows the urgency in the fulfillment. A lot of the issues we also have is a lot of partners who drag their feet when making a website and providing materials, etc. So how to create urgency for that. Second is always emphasizing long-term partnership. Never make it feel transactional. Always showing that we're there every month. We do monthly updates. We check in on them. We do quarterly reports. We do surveys. Showing them again that what they're paying for us is not just the product, not just the website, but they're paying again for the people. They're paying for the people to take care of them, to take care of their business. And then the last one is also content. Something that we're also pushing at, that at the end of the day, no matter what, how beautiful the website is or how many, how much media budget you put in your Facebook or Google campaign, if it isn't written well, if the images aren't nice, if it isn't written specifically towards the target market that they want to hit, then it won't be effective. So it's something that we've definitely been um, training and pushing a lot of our resources on. The nonlinear customer journey, so something again we're using for ourselves, and for our partners as well. Of course, we're also familiar with the funnel, traditional funnel from awareness, consideration, conversion, loyalty, advocacy. Um, before, beautiful, right? So easy. You'd see a billboard, you'd see a newspaper ad, you go to the grocery, you buy the mayonnaise, all good. Very straight, very straightforward. Right now, before I get to the grocery, I've seen maybe five mayonnaise ads. And by the time I get to the grocery, I'm still hit with more. So there's just so much clutter. There's so much going on um, that customers right now are jumping from, from, from journey from point to point. An example also in the Philippines, and I don't know if you guys have the same, so we have e-commerce services like Kalbrazada and Shopee, either like Alibaba or Amazon. So I'm sure every, we have these sales every 11-11, every 12-12, 1-1, etc. During these times is when people are so impulsive, and I've, I've researched, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people, that they just buy things without researching, without considering, because of the sale. They're just jumping straight from awareness into conversion, and immediately they really have to catch them in advocacy because they've already bought your product. So, what we were saying about this is that there's just custom, there's just jumping from, from, from awareness into conversion. At the same time, even if someone's done a lot of research, and they're already able to buy, they maybe read a hundred blogs about a camera, but maybe the next day another blog comes out for a competitive camera, they can go straight back to awareness. So they're just jumping, it's, it's, it's just so messy. So this is what we were realizing why, as a preview to the next slide, why ecosystems are important. Because we're saying that campaigns or businesses need to be ready at every single customer point right away. Before, we would get experiences where partners would be like, no, I'm good with just an awareness campaign. We can do the next one during the next phase. Or we can take time, we can do this first, and then let's check out the other one next time. But as we see phasing campaigns, there, there's a, there, with the speed of digital, there isn't that luxury anymore. You need to be ready right away. As mentioned, let's say, uh, from the example, from the e-commerce, from Lazada, from awareness, and then they purchase. Are you ready with a loyalty campaign right away? Are you ready with a couponing, repurchasing campaign right away from awareness because they've already bought? So you need to be ready for that in the whole cycle right away. No more luxury of phasing awareness campaigns, consideration campaigns over months of time. And the last one is creating smaller personalized messages and campaigns. Understanding again that there are different customers during different cycles. There's a different customer for awareness, there's a different messaging for converting a lapsed account, etc. I'm just sharing this because before there's really just a more generalized type of, of selling. So now we're really focusing more on more specific moments and having and being um, hardworking enough to find and make all of those messages, whether it's a hundred different messages, a hundred different ad groups, hundred different headlines. Um, as long as they're more specific, more specialized, that's what we try to do. Uh, and the last one, so omni-channel ecosystem, so we've heard it before. Um, I didn't make this up, I just researched about it, I just learned about it, so 
basically just saying what's the difference because we've heard the term, I think the way they're trying to differentiate multi-channel versus omni-channel. So multi-channel is being available in the channels but not necessarily making sure that they all look the same, that they all work together. So for example, we have the partner, someone was handling his Facebook page, another company was handling his website. So the Facebook page was all memes, were all jokes. Then you jump to the website and it's very formal, it's very professional. All of a sudden it feels like a different company. So it, there's that disconnect for the customer. So the goal really is, again, for us to be able to come to our partner and with the goal really of allowing them for us to have the responsibility to handle all their digital efforts is to tell them that, you know, working with them on an omni-channel objective campaign and showing them that their website, their Facebook, their Instagram, their Google business profile, understanding the objectives of each and understanding how they all work together towards the main goal. That, that's what we're trying to do and that's how we try to package all our different products together. So the omni-channel, pushing for the always-on digital ecosystems as a reference to what I was saying before about no more phasing campaigns, having executions all on, all the time. And then the last one, again, well, it's really just a challenge then to gain control, which is just the reality when we talk to our partners because they have various partners that handle their media, their website, etc. So our goal has always been how to gain full control for their entire um, digital ecosystem. So there. Um, thank you, everyone. I hope that wasn't too long or too boring. But uh, for this question. Especially, again, 
pushing the idea of services, value-added services, so that we can increase our contract sizes for our digital services um, to be able to increase the, the revenue amount. Again, the, the challenge, I don't know if this is a challenge for other companies as well, again, because there's the scale of selling for print, I think, is much easier versus the scale of digital services. Again, because of the fulfillment of how much service and how much support is needed to, to manage a website, to manage a Google campaign, all of listings management, all of that requires so much man hours, human hours. Um, so that's really the, the struggle really of how to match the, the revenue um, with, with what a lot of the digital started off with. Which admittedly, that's market-wide. Market-wide, the digital really starts at a very low price point because it's so competitive uh, right now. So my good question was, what happened to the business trend? Well, definitely, I'm not gonna lie, it, it, it was hurt bad um, in 2020, um, especially because distribution also became very difficult uh, with all the restrictions. So it, it was, it, we are trying to get some back, but that's why the focus right now is really seeing how a lot of them can just stay on digital right now because um, even for a lot of the loyal print ones, um, the pandemic really did, really did hurt them budget-wise. And so they had to make tough decisions and usually now marketing budgets, whether whatever it's print or digital or anything, what I've noticed is that marketing is usually one of the first things to go um, when, when budgets are tight. So, um, but as I said, so this June 2022, a lot of our efforts are really, con I think that's the great thing again, as I said about Yellow Page companies, we have a great database, we have great connections. We never lost touch with any of our labs partners. We've always kept in touch even without a contract with them. We've always sending them um, we even making with Wix, we send them free websites, you know, we'd send them, you know, all these free, free stuff just to know that they're there, that they can come on board anytime that they're ready. So that's basically what we've been trying to do as we build up again this year. Yes, Nate. That was just an excellent presentation, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Because uh, I thought, I had asked earlier about the you know, social media as opposed to a website. I thought you did a great job of different ecosystems, and also that's why they would want to buy all of that through you as an online channel, so that they have the same message across all platforms. So that's just really made a lot of sense to me. Tell me when your salespeople go out and they present this information to their revenue, which we will soon will be print. Do you then bundle all this together and give them one price, or do you sell it like a menu where you have here's your print price? And we would like to do this for you as well to cost an additional X. So, thanks for the question. So, that's definitely something that we've been exploring over the past few years. And what we realize right now is what's easiest for the salesperson and for the partners to bundle everything together with one price. Um, whereas before, we did try a menu of products, a lot of different packages, a lot of different price points. And I think sometimes the sales people would get too overwhelmed. And sadly, more often than not, they just go for the lowest price. Because that, I guess that's what's easiest, right? So what we did is really help the sales package it together, explain it together this way, and come up with just, let's say, five clear packages with five clear objectives so that they're just choosing from those. And then they have various inclusions, yes, whether it's print or digital or media, etc. cetera. Um, but again, yeah, everything as much as possible, we try to bundle. While, of course, we'll still accommodate standalone efforts, but the, the key marching order for the sales is bundle everything together always. Always present everything as a package of, of multiple objectives. So they, they start with the largest package, I'm assuming, and then list the customer select from there? Absolutely. So that's what I have to tell the sales. Um, you know, always give yourself room to negotiate. So you always just show the highest package with everything, unlimited services and whatnot, and then let's 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 haggle, let's go down from there because well that's just really a Filipino thing and haggling is uh, Part of part of everything, so we we, we couldn't avoid. I got that as something great. It's not just the Philippines. <laughs> sales for thirty years. You know, we used to present three packages. You mentioned five packages. Do you find that's more effective than limiting it to just three? Because what we would typically do is we find the print your premium and then your satisfactory and then your competitive, and they would usually pick the one in the middle. So I'm just quite curious if you present five different packages. So we're still trying it right out right now, so I don't have like, the exact answer data on which is better, but I think definitely um, moving it to smaller does help, especially if you do want a specific revenue or a target point. Um, so right now I can't really say if the five or the three is, is more effective right now, um, but I think 
Yes, because even with these five packages, admittedly, they're still skewing usually to, to the lower end. So if we do find that there's difficulty in pushing them up, then that is a consideration to really focus them um, to specific price points that we need to fulfill our targets. Thank you.